After visiting a nightclub, a young guy, Corey McKeague, walks through the city at night. He is staggering from the alcohol he has drunk. After some time, he reappears on the CCTV footage and disappears from view. After that, no one saw him again, where he could have disappeared into a dead-end area surrounded by video cameras, climbed over the fence, entered the building, or is there another explanation for his strange and frightening disappearance? The question of Corey's disappearance remains unanswered. Despite thousands of thoughts and attempts by relatives, police and hundreds of thousands of people around the world to find an answer. In fact, this matter is not as simple as it might seem. Many inconsistencies make this case strange and mysterious. What could have happened to the guy that night? Let's figure it out together. On Friday, September 23, 2016, 23-year-old Corey McKeague went with his friends to Berry Street Edmonds to spend the weekend and relax. He was wearing a distinctive pink Ralph Lauren shirt, white trousers and brown Timberland boots. At 2200 hours Corey arrived in the city, parking his BMW Z4 car in a paid parking lot. He called his brother and talked to him for about 40 minutes while drinking alcohol in his car. At 10.50 p.m., M., he met friends at the So Bar and then they went to another pub, the Corn Exchange. At about 11.30 p.m., Corey and company left the pub around 0.30 and headed to the Flex nightclub, which was just a few minutes away. He spent only half an hour in the club before being kicked out by doorman Will Cook due to his behavior resulting from drinking too much alcohol. Corey left peacefully, leaving his friends behind and heading towards Mama Mia Pizza where he was having fun playing rock-paper-scissors with a person unknown to him. He then ordered two hamburgers, kebabs and chips. At 1.20 a.m. he was captured on CCTV holding food as he walked past a nearby pub and headed towards a Hughes Electrical store where he sat down to eat and fell asleep. Passersby later nudged him to make sure he was okay. At about 3 a.m. Corey woke up and was using his Nokia Lumia mobile phone. At 3.08 he sent a message to a friend with a photo of the previous evening. He was last seen on street CCTV at 3.25 when he turned right into a waste loading area known as the Horseshoe. After that, no one ever saw him again. On the morning of his disappearance, Mobile data showed his phone had moved from Berry Street Edmonds to Barton Mills, Northwest. Phone data showed that the move took 28 minutes, which meant the person could not have walked that distance. The phone was traveling at a speed consistent with the speed of the car. Police said, at about 8 a.m. the phone stopped working for some reason. Perhaps the battery was dead or turned off, but this was never determined. Corey's phone was never found. What happened to Corey after he entered a dead-end garbage loading zone? How in the morning did his phone end up at such a great distance from the place where he disappeared? This is where the fun begins. Let's start from the place where Corey disappeared. The view from this camera indicates that she is located here. Corey walked out of here and disappeared from view of the video camera. This area is called Horseshoe by locals because of the shape of its buildings which resemble a horse's shoe. It is important to know that this place has a closed circuit. In other words, you can only get here from one side. Here's what the place looks like from another angle, where the CCTV camera is located. This is what the place where Corey probably disappeared looks like. But where could he have gone in this small area? There are many fences and stairs visible, which could mean that he may have climbed over these buildings and escaped. Let's look at the video footage again. We see Corey running. But why? Don't you think this is strange? Is he scared of something or is someone chasing him? He runs out, then slows down and looks back. He can be seen staggering from drinking alcohol. Then he walks around the corner and disappears. There are video cameras everywhere around this place. It has been checked and proven that a person cannot leave this territory on foot without being in the field of view of at least one of the video cameras. A rescue operation was launched. Police, rescuers, volunteers combed rural roads and nearby fields. 
there was a fear that he could fall into a ditch, or be thrown into it after being hit by a vehicle. Corey's search yielded no results. After the video surveillance system began to undergo a full analysis, it became obvious that the chances of him leaving the city undetected would be extremely small. There are 61 police cameras in the city, as well as dozens of other private cameras, containing thousands of hours of video that have been carefully analyzed. None of the cameras recorded him leaving the loading zone or moving further down the street. Police say it is unlikely that Corey could have left town undetected. Police also located each of the three cars that were in the area when he disappeared. They interviewed all the owners and found nothing suspicious in their statements. Given all of the above, it is unlikely that Corey left this place. There is only one most likely option. In the horseshoe area there is a trash loading area with several large trash cans. It is understood Corey's phone was traced to a location near Barton Mills this morning. The investigation revealed that his cell phone was traveling along the same route as a garbage truck heading to a landfill in Milton Township. This could mean that Corey may have somehow ended up in a dumpster and then ended up on a garbage truck that took it to the landfill. There have been several cases in England in recent years of drunk people falling asleep in bins and then dying inside garbage trucks. In October 2016, Suffolk police seized a garbage truck that was reported to be carrying his mobile phone. This garbage truck was equipped with a weighing device that recorded how much garbage it collected, for which residents were billed accordingly. The weight of the trash in the bin that was emptied by the garbage truck in the horseshoe area was determined to be around 15 kilograms, while the quarry's weight was around 85 kilograms, which would mean it was unlikely to have been in the bin. However, that all changed when police discovered in early 2017 that a garbage truck had loaded significantly more weight, 116 kilograms, that night. Corey's phone received social media data for 90 minutes after it was last seen. The time and location of the phone matched the route taken by Biffa's private garbage truck, which collected trash from the horseshoe area where Corey was last headed. The garbage truck arrived at 4 a.m. and left 20 minutes after the driver filled out the paperwork. In February 2017, police began searching the landfill which was identified as the last place where his cell phone signal was detected when connected to a cell tower. Corey was believed to have fallen asleep in a garbage can in the horseshoe area and was then loaded onto a garbage truck, which took him to a recycling facility in Milton. It was planned that the search would cover about 1,000 square meters of the land filled to a depth of about 8 meters and would take approximately 10 weeks. In May 2017 it was revealed that the search had cost police £1 million. This makes the Corey McKeague missing case case, one of the most expensive missing person investigations in Suffolk police history. On July 21, 2017, 20 weeks after the search of the landfill, a police detective reported that the search of the landfill had ended with no positive results. Between February and July, Police sifted through more than 7,000 tons of waste at the landfill. The police then decided to search for the burned waste, which was detained for investigation. A Suffolk police spokesman said investigations had revealed that some of Barry Street Edmonds' waste was being transported to the Red Lodge transfer station and then to the Great Blackenham incinerator. However, the investigation also found no signs of Corey at the incinerator. In September 2017, almost a year after Corey disappeared, new CCTV images were released. They depict four people who were communicating with Corey at the club that night when he went missing. Police noted that these people may provide new information. CCTV footage of people believed to have had something to do with the events of the night Corey disappeared has also been released. Police subsequently reported that some of these people had been identified and questioned but no significant information had been obtained from them. Suffolk police attended a meeting with the boss of waste company Biffa, who confirmed the weight of a bin that was emptied in the horseshoe area that night. They assumed that Corey had climbed into the trash can and fallen asleep. The data showed that the tank weighed 116 kilograms, which was significantly higher than the weight of a regular tank from the same location. 
The trash company provided bin weights in the horseshoe area collected from Jan. 16 to February. 17, 2016. Noting that the weights were typically low, mostly between 20 and 30 kilograms. It was very unusual that the trash can weighed 116 kilograms on the night Corey disappeared. The garbage company also reported that in the entire year they had only one case where the weight of the bin exceeded 100 kilograms, as well as one case of a system error that recorded the weight of the bin over 1,000 kilograms, which, of course, was impossible. Police said they believe Corey McKeague is still somewhere in the Milton landfill. Friends, write in the comments what could really happen to Corey McKeague. Could he have fallen asleep in a garbage can and accidentally died in a garbage truck? Or did he pass undetected by CCTV cameras and disappear in an unknown direction? Subscribe to the channel and like if you were interested.